Well, hi folks, Matt Kleskowski here, and uh, I am in the uh, process of putting the finishing touches on my brand new On One Photo 2019 course. Uh, it's called The Essentials of Editing Landscape Photos. And as, as I'm going through the course, and I kind of picked apart little things that I noticed a, a trend in things that I was saying where I would say, you know, a lot of times I see this overdone in a landscape photo, or I see this is overdone in a landscape photo. So I thought I'd take kind of the top five, it's actually like six or seven, depending on how you count it, but uh, the top five things that I see that are, are generally signs of, you know, overdoing it, over processing in your landscape photo. So let's go ahead with the first one here. Um, I'm going to jump over into edit. And the, the, the first thing is the sun should not be a hole in the sky. Okay. And what I mean by that is I think it's fun to shoot into the sun. I love, you know, shoot into the sun, especially if you get it at the edge of a mountain or a tree or a rock or something. And uh, and to shoot into the sun. And then you get, you know, shoot it at like F-16. You get that nice little sun star. The problem that I see a lot of times in post-processing is we'll go in here and we'll take our highlight slider and crank it down to the left. And what we get is now, now we've brought all the highlights down because the sun should be white. So that middle point is always going to be white and it should be white. But what we've done is we've brought down all the highlights around it. And we now just have this hole in our photo. We just have this big white hole. And I think it's okay to let some of that area go bright around the sun. All right. So in lieu of just bringing your, your cranking your highlight slider down, what I would say would be, you know, head over into local. And I actually have a whole lesson on this in the, in the landscape essentials course, but a quick thing that we can do is just head over to local, just kind of bring your exposure, your highlights down a little bit, use the brush and, uh, and just go in here and just kind of just dab a little bit again, not too much, just a little bit of negative highlights on there just to maybe tone down that area, but not necessarily, we don't, again, we don't want it to be this hole that appears in the sky there. All right, so that's one example. Uh, number two, let's head back over here to browse. Another thing that I see quite a bit is over contrasted clouds. So this is a great example. We've got these, you know, big white puffy clouds in this blue sky. And, um, and, and what I see that, that we'll do is we'll head over to effects and because everybody loves dynamic contrast. We come over here, we pop some dynamic contrast on it and we start to crank up these, uh, we start to crank up these settings and our clouds start to look like this. Now it's not all bad, all right? I love to add a little bit of depth and 3D quality to the clouds, but obviously this is way too much. Number one, you see white splotches start to appear. So we would, of course, we can always pull back on these sliders. But we've introduced another problem here, which is even bigger than, than overblowing out the clouds. And that is um, we've introduced some blue splotchiness. You'll notice it gets to be a deep, dark blue. This halo starts to appear around some of the clouds. So again, I, you know, I dedicated a whole video to this in the course, but one of the real quick things that we can do um, to kind of do this, to kind of get rid of this is number one, pull back on your settings. Clouds really should not look like that. Number two, if you do have a fairly heavy setting that you're you're happy with, um, I would head over into the uh, the uh, the masking area for that dynamic contrast layer, and then go in there and use a just use a kind of a low opacity brush, and then just go through there and just start to paint away. You don't have to use a huge brush; you can paint away just between some of the clouds around some of the edges of the clouds. There's other ways that we can do this too that get into some of the blending options, but this is a real quick, a real quick method to go in there and just paint away some of those dark blue areas, all right, while still keeping, as I turn this off and on, while still keeping some of that depth and some of that 3D quality that we added there. But of course, the, the main thing to, to do is always try never to add too much of it that you see some of that blue area appear inside of there. Alrighty, moving on to number three, another one that I see quite a bit of. In fact, we can keep on the same photo because that's a great example. Um, another thing that I see quite a bit of is over sharpening. So let's take a look here. We've, we've got a details panel in develop. And honestly, guys, if you've got a well captured photo that is, is, you know, sharp enough, you shouldn't have to do too much more than crank up the mount slider here. 
And it's, it's almost hard to get yourself into trouble there, right? Let's go down to this area in the foreground, all right? It's going to be subtle, but it just adds a little, it's, it is very, very subtle, but it adds a little bit of extra sharpness to some of these edges. What I see sometimes is that, let's go ahead and reset this back to zero, is that we can come over here to effects and we can add a filter and we'll, it could be dynamic contrast because dynamic contrast gives the appearance of sharpening. And then what I'll see, you know, crank up the small and we see all these little halos and glows start to appear around everything. So that's not good. Even if you didn't use dynamic contrast and you went into sharpening, again, let's go into high pass and you'll see, I, it's hard to give you a formula, but that's over sharpened. That's before, that's after, that's over sharpened. When, when your highlights start to get blown out because you've sharpened them so much, that's the sign of over sharpening. When you start to go around your photo and you start to see um, you know, a glow start to appear around some of the edges, again, this is before and this is after, that's the sign of over sharpening. You can even see this halo appear uh, around here. So things that we can do to avoid that, you know, pull back on your halo, pull back on your amount slider, um, you know, go generally less, you wanna see it, should be in at 100%, but any further that you go in than that, then you're trying to make it sharp. Remember, you're at a look, you're not seeing the photo at the right resolution. So you always have to hold back if you're gonna zoom in past 100%, I guess I should say. Um, and then just kind of remember, less is more, right? So we shouldn't see halos, we shouldn't see glowing edges on things. And you're always gonna wanna pull that back so that uh, it's not visible. All right, moving on. Oh, and another one here, just tailing off. I know it's a landscape course. I kind of consider, um, I kind of consider landscape and uh, and nature to be to be all in one. So another thing that I see a lot here is we'll go into. Uh, I would probably open up my shadows a little bit on this, but I see a lot of overcropping. All right. And if we sharpen this photo at this resolution, we'd get X amount of sharpening because sharpening is a lot resolution based. And um, so, but I see a lot of cropping. I see a lot of tight cropping, especially, you know, you're trying to catch wildlife and you didn't have a super long lens. So I see a lot of tight cropping where we get a photo like this. And then the problem that happens is if you use the same sharpening settings, it's almost as if you zoomed into the photo and added a lot of sharpening. You're gonna see a lot of artifacting. So, you know, when we come in here and we add a sharpening filter to this, it's gonna to start to get bad really quick. That's before and that's after. Again, you see these ugly halos around things. You see the edges that look like they're glowing and then they get dark around some, they get white around other edges over here. And uh, again, I, I see it, a lot of times I see it even worse than that, but, um, Again, if, if, you, if you do a before and after and your photo goes from that to that and your shadows get accentuated and your highlights get accentuated, that's a sign that you've gone too far and you really need to pull that back a little bit and maybe even consider adding a mask to it and just sharpening certain parts of the photo. All right, moving on to number four. Uh, ooh, the weird blue sky. This is another one that I see. Um, so let's uh, let's go into, you know, this is actually back to our sun example is a good one. Um, so what, what I'll see happen is, you know, if, if we don't, we hold back and we kind of resist the urge to make the sun a hole in the sky. One of the ways that we can start to work on the sky would be to go to local. And I would use my graduated filter and drop in a graduated filter. And it's not bad to go in there and darken just a little bit. But a lot of times we see over darkening and what's going to, you're going to see two things that'll happen here. Number one, the sky gets this weird brown greenish type of a color and it just looks blah. It just looks over darkened. And that may, could be, maybe we're trying to bring the sun in a little bit more, bring a little bit more detail in and feather that in. Um, but it's just, it's too dark. All right. Believe it or not, in a lot of cases, we especially when you're shooting into the sun, you don't have to darken it as much as you think that you do. It's okay to let that sky go fairly bright. In fact, if I did anything, I would I'd brighten the foreground a little bit to balance the photo so that these foreground elements weren't so shadowed. But we don't have to darken that sky quite as much to where you know, we start to see that start to happen and starts to look green. 
the other thing I see is it starts to take on a weird, a weird bluish greenish tint to it. One of the ways we can overcome that is if we do add this grad filter and we don't quite go down so far, we still get a little bit of that color shift up there. We can go down here to temperature and we can bring that temperature a little bit more blue. Okay, so that shifts it away from that greenish kind of block color and it keeps that nice blue color that we uh, that we tend to like in our skies there. So that's a that's a, a quick way to, to try to help with some of those skies. And then the last one, the last one is an interesting one because I think the main thing is, is every every photo editor is a little bit different. Someone's kind of like back in film and in, in the film days, you know, every film every film handled, handled a photo a little bit differently. Some of them boosted the colors more, some of them uh, were more contrasty. And so the thing that I would, I would urge you to do is work with, work with, with what, you, what you have here in, in understanding the editor. So here's a good example. In fact, no, in fact let's go to a different one here. I think, uh, I think we probably get a little bit better with that one. A lot of times that I see, especially with, with folks in On One, is the shadow slider can get heavier handed than it can in other programs. It's not a bad thing. At low numbers, it works fine. But because we can, sometimes we do. And I see a lot of this. Right? And what we just did is we took this beautifully sculpted, contrasty, lit photo. All right, Because this is, this is fading light and it had a lot of nice contrast to it. And we just totally flattened it out. Totally killed all all of the shadow and the highlight in the photo to where it all looks like it's just one flat tone inside of here. So resist the urge to crank your shadows up. Even if you have a dark shadow, what you're going to want to do, maybe add a little bit of shadow enhancement, maybe increase the exposure and then pull back on highlights. And we can kind of work between exposure and highlights and not as much shadow to bring some detail. So if you look at the before and then the after, We've made it less contrasty. We've bought some of that shadow back out, but we're not necessarily flattening the whole photo because we're taking some of our highlights and bringing them down. Sometimes it's a matter of bring, bring the entire exposure down and then boost the shadows a little bit more and then bring the exposure down a little bit more and then boost the shadows a little bit more. So it's just kind of getting to know your sliders and the leeway that you have. And especially for, for people that came from another program, um, they're going to be different. Every raw editor is going to be a little bit different and you have to get to know kind of the nuances of each one of them. And that's the best advice that I can give you is to work between exposure highlights and shadows rather than just cranking up your shadows and thinking that's just going to open up the shadows. Sometimes you have to darken everything back up with the exposure slider and try to find a happy place between the two. I'm going to go with a number six here. Um, I know it said, I said five, but I'm realizing there's a key one that I forgot. Um, and it actually it tails off on what we just did because I had the example for that. But again, uh, I, I will see a lot of times that we'll go over here and we will crank up the shadows and we get a photo that looks like that. I can't tell you how many times that I see this. So I won't beat a dead horse. I think we know we don't want to quite go that high. Uh, we can pull our highlights back. The other thing that I see a lot is um, overuse of dehaze. And it almost ties in with what we just saw and it ties in with the weird blue sky. So what we'll do is we can go over here because this mountain has a little bit of atmospheric haze to it. It's kind of midday. And um, so we can take our haze slider and crank it back. And if you look at what it does to the sky, it just typically does bad, bad things to the sky. All dehaze sliders in every program do. So what we want to do is rather than do it here, we want to do it with a local adjustment. And uh, we don't want any exposure, but we want to bring our haze down. And then we just want to paint over whatever it is that we want to go in and remove the haze from. And I'll use a higher opacity brush. We want to go in and we want to dehaze this way. All right. And you're not going to see it as much. Let's, uh, there we go. And maybe even a little structure. Okay. And you'll see just a little bit of a difference here. That's before. And that's after. But if you do have to remove haze from a photo, that's the way that I would suggest doing it is with a local adjustment rather than doing it with a global slider, just because it will make your sky look a little funky. Okay, folks, I, uh, I hope you will stay tuned on the website and check out the essentials uh, course. I've had a blast creating it, putting some finishing touches on it, but there's a lot of good 
There's a lot of how in it, but there's also a lot of why in it. I think you're really going to enjoy um, a deeper dive into a landscape workflow. Hope you'll uh, stay tuned to the page here and you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you again real soon.